Well, welcome to another episode of the Board Game Business Podcast. I'm Jeremy Commander, and I'm here with Brian Hank uh, of Pull the Pen Games. I don't know. What's your title, Brian? President? CEO? Oh, president, I guess, is what I usually go with. Slave labor? <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. Doing, doing everything I can't convince other people to do. <laughs> Which is a lot of things in small business. It's a lot of things, yeah. <laughs> and so today we're talking about our, our, our top five uh, trends or predictions for how it's going to change the game industry after coronavirus and what, you know, what's going to, what's going to happen afterwards to the industry, what's going to look like in the future. Uh, and so that's what we're talking about today. Brian, what's our, our, our number five prediction for the, the future? Uh, let's see. Let's look at the list here. Um, so as everybody uh, probably knows, if you've heard the, um, if you've listened to these episodes before, we each kind of come up with our own list and then we combine them. So this is our combined list. Number five on our combined list uh, is that the types of games that are going to be published are going to be different. And there's a lot of different, uh, like in a lot of different ways. Um, so um, there's going to be more uh, low player count games, uh, solo games. Uh, so, you know, even, you know, like, Right now, we're excited Zoro's coming out, which has a solo option, and it goes two players, three players, and really all the way up to eight with the expansion. So we're really trying to work hard, as hard as we can, as fast as we can to get this one out to everybody so they can play it while in quarantine. Uh, but then our next campaign is for a good cop, bad cop expansion, and that's a lot less interesting to people right now because the lowest player count is four. So we were, you know, we were almost thinking like, man, do we just delay this? Um, you know, till next year or until things change possibly. And um, we're, you know, we're not going to do it. We're going to go, go forward with it, but it's definitely been a concern. And our next games that we are planning to publish, we will make sure our lower player counts. And I'm sure other publishers are going to be doing the same thing. Yeah. People can play two player at home, but the, getting, the, getting your five friends together to play the resistance is getting harder and harder to do. Yeah. Although you yeah. can you can play games over video, it's it's possible. I'm doing some here in quarantine, playing some with Richard, our 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 our, our beloved former co-host. Uh, we playing some games over video with him, uh, and it works okay. It's not as good as a real around the table experience, but it can uh, kind of fill the gap while you're there. I agree, and I think me, uh, yeah, yeah. Let me ask you: Are you playing any solo games? Because I think most a I'm lot of people are playing solo them. Are you, games. Are you doing yeah. Not, not really. If I was to play a, okay. a solo game uh, for to hit my get my board game fix, I would go play on a video game platform. Like I'd, I'd play mm. on the iPad, and I'd play board yeah. games there. Where I can play against the AI, or I can play against friends online, and that's probably yeah. what I would would do. Uh, there are okay. a lot of good solo games, and I have played some solo games before. But for me, the mm -hmm. part of board gaming is the communal experience, and yeah. so the. Yet yeah, without that communal experience, it's just not the appeal is not the same. I'm not I'm not a big fan of solo games for that for that reason. So yeah, I don't I don't okay. hate them, but it's like they don't scratch the itch for me. Yep, yep. I, what I other? Uh, yeah. What other design you know things do you think are going to change? I think I think you're right on. I think especially because uh, this is going to put a damper on people's income and in Kickstarter and like the Kickstarter you know hundreds of games going up every month. And we've talked in the past how having a solo version in your Kickstarter game. Uh, can you know increase the number of people of back it because there are a lot of people who just like to buy games and collect them and they that always get them to the table and if they can play solo it, it adds a lot of value for them. I think that value is going to be even higher now. Like you're going to see this game like oh it has a solo version even if I can't you know play with my friends for months I can you know I can play the solo version. So I th yep. I think that is a trend. Lower player counts makes sense to me. Uh, we are talking about maybe it's going to lower the quality of stuff. And yep. It 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 might. I think I think people are going to be much more reluctant to spend money on games and Kickstarter in an, a more uncertain world. So I think if you have a low quality game, it's just going to flop on Kickstarter. Or else I hope so. <laughs> so I'm yeah, not sure, I'm not sure the quality is going to go down. I think we might see fewer people like. Right now, it's kind of like, or, or you know, last year, 2019, be like, this game is good enough. I'm going to kickstart it. You know, I'm going to hire the artist and I'm going to do it myself and I'll, I'll do great on Kickstarter. And now I think people are going to reconsider that more. Uh, like, oh, do I put all the time and effort into this? You know, what if I fail on Kickstarter? Because Kickstarter is much, you know, much more cautious now. Uh, so mm -hmm. I, think, I think we may see some downward pressure on the low quality spam games. Okay. Okay. That could be the reason. The reason I was kind of pushing for that is because. 
I think that like, at least for me, it's hard for me to play test right now. It's really hard for me to play yeah. test. Yes. And so if a publisher, you know, a small publisher like me was trying to get their, you know, continue with their, their lineup of games to try to get those out. Now they might just continue with kind of the planned uh, schedule of them, even though they haven't been able to do the play testing. I know. I, I mean, I've had a little pressure uh, on that. Like, yeah, I know we've got this game like are already set before this happened. This aren't like our next like good cop, bad cop expansion. But the ones following that are in the design phase right now. And that design phase is taking a lot longer and I'm mm. having to do a, a lot more of it myself. And so I have pressure to like get the next game ready to go and finalize the design so I can start working on graphic design and illustrations and everything, which takes forever. Uh, so I want to finalize that design and I just can't, I'm not, it, it, I'm having a hard time saying this is done because I haven't had enough people test it yet. Got it. And I can see for indie designers too, indie designers re rely on local game nights and game conventions to really drive their indie titles and they're not going to get any of that. And so, yeah, yeah. the, the playtesting, I, I see the argument you're saying is playtesting is going to crash. So that's going to exactly. end quality down the pipeline. Exactly. Yep. Yep. That seems plausible. Okay. I'll, I'll give you that one. <laughs> so let's go on to number four. Uh, what's our number four prediction for the, the future? Um, so I think, um, you know, similar to what we've been talking about, some things are going to change on the publisher side. Uh, they're going to, we're going to see publishers make some changes and I'm a little biased because I am one, uh, you know, so that's what I'm thinking about. Uh, but I think, uh, I think publishers are going to transition to, so, I mean, like what you said, some of, some people are going to be like, not worth it, or uh, Kickstarter isn't doing as well. I'm not even going to try. Maybe they won't publish their game, or maybe their game won't get funded. So that'll happen. As that happens, I think some smaller publishers are going to turn more into game design studios, where they're just like, I like to design games. I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to try to get other publishers to do it, rather than trying to do it themselves. So that'll be, I think we'll see some of that uh, transition. Um, I also think some publishers are going to go more towards mobile, creating mobile games, mobile experiences, maybe even leaving board games entirely. And like, I like making games. Board games aren't doing very well right now. I'm going to switch over to mobile games or online games or something that is actually growing now even more so and will probably continue to grow. So I think they'll transition more uh, either to game design studios or into some sort of online realm. I buy the game design studio. I, I see that, especially people. You know, it's hard to be a publisher. So we talked about many times. Yeah. It's 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 much mm -hmm. more work than most people anticipate. And so yeah, I think I think I can see more smaller studios going like, yeah, I'm going to try to do a studio method because yeah, the the business side I think I'm done with, especially in a more challenging business environment. Transition yeah. to mobile. That would make my dream come true. I've been talking a long time how, you know, board game companies should, you know, hire someone to make an online version of their game that teaches you how to play, especially if you have a, a moderately successful board game. You can really make it get more legs that way. We've talked about how that spiked sales of Ticket to Ride 30%, the mobile version, because people learned to play from the mobile version and then went, went out and bought the physical version and it drove sales, of the physical version. Um, I, that's such a hard transition to make. And the tools are easier now to make mobile apps, right? The, the programming languages are easier than they were. There's more tools. There's like turnkey environments you can get. You can get cross-platform tools. But uh, I still, I think that's a hard transition to make. So we'll, I don't, we'll see. <laughs> Man, you're just, uh, you're just shooting me down on, uh, on these, aren't you? I buy, I think I buy I'm, the studio I'm, route. I buy the studio route. I think, yeah. I, think that's, 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 I think that trend actually was in place before uh, coronavirus. Uh, that yes, I think, yeah. you know, Kickstarter had, had kind of peaked and, 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 I think that people are reevaluating, like, hey, do I want to be an indie publisher with – I do all this work for very little return. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm willing to maybe take a smaller percentage, right, my, my, have my upside be smaller, I can do a lot less stress in my life uh, and be more of a studio. So I think uh, – give yeah. that, st that stress to Brian instead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and I saw some of my friends who are indie designers going that route. Certainly uh, John Brieger, who's a developer, uh, formed a studio – with other yeah. uh, designers, developers, and artists to offer like a package. Yeah. Like, hey, we can do your art direction. We can mm. manage your art. We can do your development and play testing for you. Uh, and we can do all of that in a one-stop shop. So we can take this title That's like cool. you think it has pot pot potential, and we can get you all the way to mm. the finish line ready for Kickstarter. And they actually they made the decision not to offer 
like Kickstarter management or marketing, which they had okay. considered doing first. They're like, no, we're not that good yeah. at this, so we're gonna we're not gonna no. do it. We're gonna leave that for someone who's and, better. Yeah. And I think it was the right call. Yeah. Instead of offering every yeah. service, like we're gonna pull back yeah. to what we're really good at. And so I, I yep. saw that not just with them, but other people too. And so I think that that is a trend that's just gonna accelerate now. Yeah. All right, what about number three? What's number three on our list of the future? Yeah, this one's a sad one. This one's really sad. Uh, we're gonna lose. We're gonna lose a lot of retailers. We're gonna lose a lot of friendly local game stores. Uh, we might lose some specialty markets like uh, you know Barnes and Barnes and Noble or Books a Million. Um, some of those you know pretty big box stores, yeah. but also have a, a good game selection. Um, and then uh, maybe even some distributors too. So I think uh, I think we'll lose twenty five percent across the board of of all of the you know retail uh distribution channel we're gonna lose 25 percent um it could be a little lower could be higher uh but i think 25 percent is about what we're gonna see so it's it's sad your friendly local game store just won't reopen uh for for many of you this is on my list too i think yeah i think i, I think i phrased it as if without friendly without friday night magic a lot of local mm -hmm. game stores will will close because their, their revenue is, yeah. is, is zero they got bills to pay, and I don't know if they'll be able to come back. Some, some, some of my local ghost, uh, game stores also sell online, so they're selling games online. Why they're shut down? But that's you know that's mm -hmm. like, that's a trickle, and it's hard to do. Uh, one of them has like yeah. a warehouse, so they can fulfill things themselves. But man, that's that's yeah. a hard position, and so I feel feel bad because you you love your local game store, but uh, that's definitely the kind of small business that may not survive this kind of condition. I think it, you're gonna I think you're right. We're gonna see a lot of game stores close. Because uh, they they couldn't yeah. make it. Which is yeah, sad. they're still even though even if they're getting some trickles of online sales, they are still yeah. paying rent. Yeah, you know they're still paying rent. They might be paying employees, uh, but you know for for nothing, it's just going down the drain. And as as hard as being a publisher is, um, and I keep you know like everybody cry for me, my job is so hard. <laughs> it's not it's not it's not as hard uh, as um, it's not as uh, as hard as being a friendly local game store and making yeah. money in that. That's even harder. A local so retailer some is very of those, hard. Like, yeah. Yeah, how how would you recover from this? And yeah, I don't even know. Um, those who are, I don't know. Yeah, it's gonna be tough. So if you love your local game store and they do some sort of fundraiser, one of mine's doing a, a GoFundMe right now. Uh, yeah. So if you love your local game store and you want to see them stick around, consider like, oh, maybe I'm gonna back them, or if they do some sort of promotion, try to keep them around, you know, to keep them alive, uh, so you have them yeah. in the future. I think game stores will idea. eventually come back. But I think the other, other thing is there'll be pressure, you know, especially when we come out of this game stores. If you play at your local game store, it, people are densely packed at tables, you know, handling mm, yeah. together. And I think there'll oh, be some yeah. reluctance for a lot of people to do that in the future. So I think it's yeah. that's put even more pressure on the local game stores that do make it through. To like, how can we get yeah. customers in the store or is our environment going to gonna turn people away? Yep. All right. Well, that's that was sad. Uh, sad. But let's 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 move on to uh, number two. Which is not so sad oh, and related, isn't it? It is related. <laughs> I don't know if it's not so sad. Um, so, uh, I mean, board board gaming goes uh, board gaming goes online is kind of our number two. Um, so that's where online retailers. Uh, well, that's where uh, you know more people are just going to do their gaming online. Yep. they're just gonna um, they're going to use Tabletopia, Tabletop Simulator. Uh, they're going to use um, other. Uh, other means uh, of of doing it. We so like one of our um, like a, a good cop bad cop fan recently just created a web version of a good cop bad cop, um, and so you can just play a good cop bad cop online. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna spread the word about that. But um, you know, it's just a website that you know basically simulates a game of good cop bad cop, so you can play with your friends and join it. Um, those are the types of things, or you know, maybe um, you know, mobile versions of games, or that that kind of thing is gonna take over. People are more of our our board gaming is going to happen in the online realm rather than face to face. I agree. Uh, do you have the URL for where I can play a good cap, uh, bad cap online? Um, I'll put it in the show notes. Uh, <laughs> I don't have it. Uh, I don't have it on me. Um, I tell you what, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to call out some of the online gaming. And while I do that, yeah. see if you can find yeah. that URL. <laughs> All right. Let me see if I can find it. Let me see if I can find it. Got it. Uh, and so what I'll do here is, for the video version, we're trying a video version today in addition to the audio version uh, because uh, because video conferences is exploding right now in the world we're in, uh, WebEx has gone free. And WebEx is like this big 
you know, enterprise level tool that's now free to use. And it's like, oh, let's, let's try it out. So I'm going to see if I can share into our video version here. And I apologize if you're on the audio version, I'm going to narrate what I'm doing. Uh, the, or there we go, some websites here. So uh, Board Space, this is one of those uh, board games to play, uh, uh, places to play board games online. And they have a lot of like classic, simple games, boardspace.net. Uh, that one was on my radar that I was looking at and trying out. Uh, Tabletop Simulator, a lot of designers already use this. Uh, and I've seen that used a lot. I've seen Roll20 used a lot as well. And then uh, Board Game Arena. I'm currently playing uh, Seven Wonders with some some friends, including Richard, on Board Game Arena right now. And man, it, it's it's pretty slow <laughs> to play a game of Seven Wonders online. But it does work. And we're playing Seven Wonders and it enforces the rules. So you don't have to worry about like people unintentionally cheating uh, and because it enforces the rules. And then I, I signed up for Tabletopia too and bought a premium account there, uh, which does not enforce rules, but they had a good implementations of the Stonemaier games. Uh, and so I was like, oh man, I want to try playing. I think Tapestry would work well online. So I set, up, I set that up to play with my friends because I thought, you know what? That, the state of the board doesn't change a lot. There's not a lot of cards that you're looking at all the time. So it's kind of the ideal game to play online. Uh, and so I set that up as well on, on Tabletopia. So those are some of the ones I would call out as being possible sites to look at. Tabletopia.com, BoardGameArena.com, Tabletop Simulator, and BoardSpace.net. And then I guess I'll call up Roll20. Uh, my friends who are designers... Uh, use this to test stuff. So again, you know, testing things online, uh, they use this to test some games. So my friends use this, design and so they they like it. it's also a very kind of a lightweight way to do that. All right, Brian, do we find the URL very for cool. where I can play Good Cup back up online? Yeah, uh, let me share my screen. Let's oh, okay. See. Let me go. I, I'll have to pass you the uh, pass you the ball. Ah, okay. Can be done. Uh, you now have the ball and will be the ability to share your screen. We get this good cap, bad cap demo online. I tried it out when you told me about it the other day. You told me about it just last week. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Let me uh, let me go try it out. And so I tried it out, and uh, that's that's awesome for a fan implementation. My design partner, Franklin, tells me that he's playing um, tons of Dominion uh, online in the browser. <laughs> Another unofficial adaptation. Uh. Uh, can you see my screen right now? I can. I can see your iPad. I can see Dr. Right. Mario. <laughs> uh, get out of here. So, of GCBC, computer. for good cop, bad cop, GCBC dot, oh, that's Arantius.com. So, A-R-A-N-T-I-U-S. A-R-A-N-T-I-U-S. T-I-U-S dot com. So GCBC dot Arantis dot com. And you can set up a good cop, bad cop game to play in the browser with your friends online. Want to scratch your yep. gaming itch? Because good cop, bad cop is pretty fast. Uh, I like that. And I'd probably have a video chat running parallel to this. You can see people's face. That's part of the fun with good cop, bad cop. I always love to see Brian's face when I shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we'd get a, I think that, I think that's great. So that's a free way to play online right now with your friends. Get some good cap, bad cap going. Yep. And that is uh, Anthony uh, Lulin, Lou Allen, Lou Allen, Lou Allen, Lou Allen, Anthony Lou Allen, who, uh, who created this. So it's really cool. Um, well, thank you, Anthony. You check out. Uh, yeah. Thanks, that's Anthony. Awesome. Yeah. See if I can figure out how to stop sharing my screen now. <laughs> hey, there we go. All right. All right. So then. Uh, I, I think that, that, uh, that's going to take us just about, we have one more, we have one, we have more. one more, one, one more. more. Yep. So yeah, the number rise, one. Is, is I think number one. for the, so those online gaming sites, I think that, that yes, they're going to, I, I'm reluctant to use them because my, my whole life for board games is, is sitting around the table with other people. The social element is mm -hmm. really what, what drives a lot of the board games for me, but I think yep, those online too. sites are really going to take off because people want to scratch their board game itch and it's going to, it's going to scratch it for them. they will finally hit some critical yep. mass enough, enough signups enough to see stuff going on. So our number yeah. one, Brian, what is our number one prediction <sighs> for the future about how the industry so is going to change? One, uh, this one is mainly c 
conventions and game groups are going to change. So they're going to they're going to significantly change. They already have. Um, it's gonna it's gonna be you know we they're they've stopped now. I mean they're they're they aren't happening. Conventions aren't happening, or they're happening online. Uh, game groups aren't happening, or they're happening online. But you know mostly they're just not happening. Uh, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say that that and you were hesitant when I when I brought this up that the uh, that the golden age of board gaming is over because we've we've been talking about that for a while really yeah. the last like you know eh, I'd say probably maybe three four years or so people have really been talking about this as the golden oh, age longer, of board gaming longer than that I think I think you know conventions have been seeing like huge year over year growth for like seven plus years now. Yeah, experiential yeah. entertainment has just been going like. Pew. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's over. I think the golden age is over. I'm a little opt more optimistic uh, here. I think this is going to be a a big reset. Uh, I guess you could argue that the golden age is over. We're going to start a silver age after a recovery yeah. period. You know, yeah. we use like the comic book analogy there. Uh, and I guess you could make that argument, and I, I would buy that argument. But yeah, I think I think conventions will will come back. People do love them and will miss them, but I think they'll have to have a recovery period. I think you'll see them relaunch and have low uh, lower attendance and struggle a little bit, and then take some some rebuilding time. Uh, and I think yeah. that I think that's we will we will indeed see that. Uh, for me, as a convention organizer, someone who runs a convention, I I don't want to run a convention uh, until there is a vaccine, right? I just don't mm -hmm. I don't want to do even even if you know. You know the, the virus is way tamped down, and it seems really safe. I, you know, if if I ran a convention as the organizer, and that caused a flare up or caused people to get sick, you know, I would feel guilty about that forever. I, I just I couldn't live with that on my conscience. So I think you know I would I would be hesitant to run one until there's a vaccine and it really is like a hundred percent safe. Uh, and just from a convention organizer point of view, uh, it's just I couldn't I couldn't. I wouldn't want to risk it. You know, it's not conventions are fun and I love them, but they're not a necessary part of life. And I wouldn't want to endanger people's lives for a convention. I just I couldn't do it. Yeah. Whenever I think of conventions, you know, my mind is just flooded with like going into the gaming halls and uh, and, you know, just like it's just that masses smell. of people. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're, you're pushing your way through people like yeah, yeah. you know it's just there's people absolutely everywhere jamming into these small rooms yeah. and hallways and it's uh, like if there was any kind of uh contagious virus in that atmosphere it would just explode uh i don't even know how they're gonna have that like how are they gonna how are they gonna make the giant conventions even work yeah you know so that people can keep their distance um, but, but, you know, as, as you mentioned too, uh, that, um, before this call, it's going to change in, in terms of sanit sanitization, people wearing yep. gloves, people wearing masks, uh, that kind of thing. I mean, it's going to, the whole industry, everybody, even when you go to your game night again, after all of this, you're, there's going to be people wearing face masks. You're going to be playing board games with people make, wearing face masks and gloves and things. Uh -huh. Um, it's that's it's just that's how it's going to be now. They'll be a lot more germ conscious than they were. You know, the germ conscious yeah. was kind of kind of low, and uh, I think we look at the the flu epic in the U.S. You know, a hundred years ago, people were very germ conscious for uh, for a while after that, and then kind of faded as society went back to normal. Uh, I'm kind of a germaphobe. I think I've I've shared before when I grew up, my my father's had two kidney transplants, and so he's immunosuppressed, so he's very vulnerable. Uh, and so as a kid, you know, I was always taught to wash my hands more and be much more germ conscious to protect him. It's kind of ground uh, ground mm. into my psyche even even now. Uh, but I mm -hmm. think, yeah, I think for a big convention, you'll see people be more germ conscious. And I don't I don't know how they could do that safely. It'll be interesting to see. I think you'll see maybe smaller or more spread out stuff initially uh, and then densify over time. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, there is our our top five predictions for what the future will look like. Uh, after we come out of shelter in place, what will the game industry look like? Uh, and so the types of games that get published will change a little bit. More more solo, maybe lower player counts, maybe lower quality if they're not getting the play testing in. Uh, more design, more tra more uh, transition for publishers and designers into studios, or maybe even to mobile games or online games or browser games are, are pretty easy to implement now. Uh, sadly, probably a lot of friendly local game stores are going to make it, and online retail is going to grow even more. Board gaming goes online. Those online sites are probably going to see a huge bump and more of a permanent presence in the future. 
And then uh, I'll, I'll go with Brian's. The golden age of conventions are over. <laughs> it's over. It's, it's over. over, Jeremy. We, we'll see. I'll, I'll wait for the silver age. I'm optimistic the silver age will get here pretty soon. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. I think, I think it'll be pretty good, but it, it's probably going to take a few years to get there. Right on. So thank you very much for joining us. I'm Jeremy Commander, and I've been with Ryan and Hank as always. Thanks for listening to the Board Game Business Podcast, and, and thanks to our wonderful announcer and editor, Mark Edwards.